Hello everyone, this is Karthik Silvaraj and in this video tutorial we will be seeing about web services. So if you are an IT employee, you could have definitely come across this term web services. So let's see what exactly is a web services. So by the definition of W3C, World Wide Web Consortium, a council which maintains and governs standards, a web service is a software system designed to support interoperable machine-to-machine -machine interactions over a network. So to define it in even simpler terms, a web service is a service offered by an electronic device to another electronic device in a machine-readable format like XML, JSON or BDB formats like EDI through web technologies or application protocols like HTTP, etc. So if you think that this definition is also confusing, maybe at this end of this video, you will come to know what web service is. So I'll just move on to the next slide. So why a web service? So taking a 10 to 20 years back, there were so many computer applications doing the job in silos. So there was a system for uh, uh, for a ERP system, there was a separate forecasting systems, there was a separate HR systems. So there came a need for these systems to interact by the, but, but at that time there was no possibility for these applications to be interacted. So what they did is they copied the data from one application to another application and they started using it, which became a very tedious job over time. So that was the beginning, having a technology to communicate between two different applications. Okay, so that is one of the main uses of web service. Next one is interoperability. So now we have application running in different operating systems which were written in different programming languages. <coughs> so to enable communication of programs written in different programming languages and running in different operating systems web service is going to bridge that gap so that is another important use of web service and the third thing is it is loosely coupled and the cost of communication is also reduced significantly so just imagine you have a application running in java and you have another application running in uh, .NET, and you need to have both of them communicated so instead of either migrating the application running in .NET to be written in Java is going to be costlier than to introduce a web service which can actually act as a bridge to exchange, exchange the information between these two systems. So it can drastically reduce the cost of communication. The last one is it use a standardized protocol for communication. So we can define the standards that how a communication can be. So that is the fourth use of web service. Moving on to the next slide. So there are a lot of web service protocols or types, but on a broader basis, the web service can be divided into two types. One is a SOAP based web service and the other is a REST compliant web service. So in the first case, SOAP is a protocol, but REST is not a protocol, it is an architectural st style. That's why we call it as a REST compliant web service. So most of us are uh, very familiar only with these two types of web services, but there are also other types of web services available. So some of the examples are XML RPC, which stands for XML Remote Procedure Call. And the next one is JSON RPC. And we have Web Processing Service and we have HCN2. So moving on to the next slide. So to implement these web services, we already have some tools or some software technologies which will assist us to create the SOAP or REST based web services. So that's called as a web service framework. Okay. So, so in plain terms, framework is defined as an essential supporting structure of a building object so it applies the same over here as well so the building object is a web service so to 
build a web service, we need a supporting structure, which are these web service frameworks. So some of the most popular web service frameworks are Apache Access 2, which is written in Java. And you can uh, build your SOAP based web services and REST compliant web services using it. And the next famous web service framework is Jersey, which through which is also written in Java and through which you can build REST compliant web services. And we have Apache CXF, which is written in Java and it can support in building SOAP and REST compliant web services. We have WSO2, WSF, which is nothing but WSO2 web service framework, which is written in PHP and it supports SOAP based web service. We have .NET framework, which is written in C Sharp and uh, VB.NET, which is useful for creating SOAP based web services. And finally, we have Zen framework, which supports in building SOAP, REST, JSON RPC, XML RPC based web services and it is written in PHP. So these are some of the frameworks that I have listed. There are a, no, a number of frameworks out there. You can, you can have a check on it as well. So also this also, this list provides you a key conclusion why we go for SOAP or REST based web services. If you see there are a lot of frameworks which support SOAP and REST most and we don't have much frameworks supporting the rest of the web service protocols or types. So that is one of the key points why we use SOAP and REST web services most. There are also some more advantages over the other web service protocols or types but we will be seeing about that in the future videos. Moving on to the next slide. So, So web service definition language is nothing but a set of rules for defining a web service. So we have a few web service definition languages. So the most popular one is WSDL or WSDL which stands for web service description language through which you can define your SOAP based or REST compliant web services. And we have RAML, which stands for RESTful API Modeling Language. And this is a description language or definition language built by the famous open source ESP tool team MuleSoft. And we have Swagger and we have WADL, which stands for Web Publication Description Language. We have API Blueprint as well. And we have RSDL, RESTful Service Description Language and hypermedia. So I think now you have a better idea about what a web service is and how a web service protocol or type is different from a web service framework and how a framework is different from a description language. So we will be seeing about more in detail about SOAP and REST and about Vistels and Ramble in my future videos and thanks for watching. Bye.